with my very special guest, Dr. Pat Allen. And Dr. Pat, I understand you had a really big, big weekend this past weekend. I had a wonderful experience at the University of California at Irvine in the Women's Opportunity Center, which we deeply appreciate using the beautiful room, wherein I combined two lines of my work. I work, I have worked since 1997 with a CEO group, you know, where I go in mm -hmm. for men and women who want to learn how to communicate in a healthy way, and also my basic training for people. So it was a leadership. It was watch your mouth. Which, which is, is all about, it goes back to the basics mouth. and semantics and That's communication right. and realignment of words well, that we speak. It's how to make decisions mm -hmm. rationally through good languaging, how to clean up bad language habits that you've learned from your culture, your family, your church, your teachers, your coaches. Can you give me an example of that? Maybe? For example, uh, oh, excuse me, pardon me. I did that. That kind of behavior, you know, uh, of apologies versus an amends. Yeah. For example, an apology is when you knew you did it and you knew you were doing it, and therefore the person you owe an apology to. But I advise people never make an apology for a mistake. Right. Because when you do that, you're degrading yourself. It wasn't an intention. It wasn't an intention. It's just a human That's right. Era. You're being a, hu a non-perfect human being. Right. So what we're doing is we're looking at the words. Because we, because, uh, can I talk to you today? No, no, you can I talk to you. I want to talk to you today. May I please? Put the polite at the end of the sentence and the potent at the beginning. So you're not asking permission, you're stating your needs. You're stating your needs and therefore taking care of you. Right. And when you confront, because it's how to make decisions rationally, not emotionally, how to clean up your language, and how to confront with respect and cherish it. I have to learn that. When I'm not very good at confronting, uh, for some reason, and uh, how would you... Were you were probably trained to be polite. That's correct. and Or not say anything at all. Or not say anything at all, which is doormat. Yeah, it all went inside and Absolutely. Uh, it raged out in other ways. That's right. If the mind doesn't know it mm -hmm. and the mouth can't talk about it, the body is going to demonstrate it in illness. That's right. And Depression, overeating, everything. drugs. 90% um, of illness is based on some level of depression mm -hmm. that comes out through behavior and words. See, people are so busy trying to feel good, they don't realize that when you feel bad, the only way to change that is drugs, meds, and death. That you're better off if you negotiate your words and your behavior than try to eliminate your feelings. Mm -hmm. Because they aren't negotiable other than drugs, meds, and dead. That's right. I had a young girl who walked in uh, to my office today, and the first thing that she said to me was, I've had just an awful day. And then she looked at me and she says, and I guess, you know, other people have worse days. And I stopped her and I said, you know, you don't have to excuse having a bad day. And I said, it's okay to be in it and get to the other side of it. Yes. Um, and I think too often people do that and they dismiss what's going on in their life. They don't decide. See, what I say is the way out of any negative feeling, any negative feeling, is a positive decision followed by action or inaction. Right. Either do something or stop doing something as soon as possible. Otherwise, it's just procrastination. You're just... Chasing it's just your tail. You're, you're talking, but no action. It's no just action. talking, talking, talking. That's oh, well. Right. And you get I'm, nowhere. I'm a cognitive behavioral therapist. I'm not an emotive therapist. Mm -hmm. You see, I send people to psychiatrists to get meds if they need it. Right. That's emotional. But in my room, it's what do you want, and I'll help you get it. Or what do you not want, and I'll help you get rid of it. Right. I love that. It's very direct. 
Uh, yes. It's forget about the past. It's not about tomorrow, which the projection is it's about right today. now. And it's problem, solution, problem, solution. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. That's what I um, do. That's why I'm here, and that's why I'm and so that's aligned what my school with teaches. you. Great. Um, and that this was a five-hour seminar, so it was a big deal. It combined all of basically all of your teachings. It and did I'm both. Very sorry, uh, I wasn't do there. good to feel good career right. and feel good to do good relationships. I put it together, but it's still the same thing. Feel good to do good. Feel good to do good is a feminine yin way of behaving. Uh -huh. Feminine men and feminine women need to feel good to do good. So very often. They've got to figure out what it is they want to stop doing, like That's keeping not, secrets. Okay. You see, stop oh, being reading, passive. smoking, right. not telling the truth, whatever it is in their whatever life it is. that they're not be honoring. That's right. Or if they want to do good to feel good, then they've got to figure out what they want, and then they've got to step up to the plate, man up. Whether you're a man or a woman is immature. We're all men and we're all women. See, that's what yes, the secret right. is. There's four the people in every have. relationship. Right. There's two yins and two yangs. Straight, gay, lesbian, doesn't matter. Right. The, it, well, I have a question about the, What's the do good. And the question is that I was a doobie all my life. Do more, do more. You oh, were raised to be I a boy. I was raised, yes. I, well, I was the baby of uh, four children, and I had three older brothers at a time of Guess women's what? lib, and... They decided everybody was going to do good. But see, that's ego dystonic. Uh -huh. That's not taking care of you physically. No. Your ego is built to take care of your body. We're estrogen, at least you were. Mm -hmm. We were estrogen-based, and that's a feel-good hormone. Testosterone is a do-good hormone. It's so me, yeah. Your ego is supposed to serve your body, not mm -hmm. your soul. So women are in, in the cherished role are to be taken care of? Feel good to do good. I don't care what they feel good. Feel what, good. However, Whatever you feel is. good. Young women and old men have to feel good to do good. The reason that older men die so early is because generally they try to stay on the line as a do-gooder and they collapse. Or their women go from feel-good women to do-good women, women and they disrespect their mm -hmm. men, mm -hmm. and they die because they're suffering. Growing up in women's lib during that era, I think, I mean, roles were really confused. It they wasn't women's that... lib. It was men's lib. Okay. Women's lib helped women imitate men. It was all mixed up. They're the standard. It was all mixed up. Or I was all mixed up. And finding my point being is I'm finding today the woman that I am uh, how can I put this? Um, I've become more foo foo, so to speak, more feminine. You've become more feel good. More feel good, and That's I right. just love it as opposed to this do good. And all the time, I'm not saying the do good isn't oh, appropriate. Yeah, right. And I'm not saying feel good. When we stop prejudicially saying that sensitive, feminine, creative men are not real men, right. or that dynamic career women that want to be dynamic career women mm -hmm. aren't real women. We're either career men and women or we're men and women with careers. Mm -hmm.